Uh, let's cover the new cards. I will cover them one by one. We have Boom Baboon. I have a problem. This doesn't look like a baboon to me. See, when I think of baboons, this is what I think of. I don't know about you guys. For me, these are baboons. You need the big red butt, okay? Listen. Something that, that, that looks like... That literally looks more like I am Weasel. Too much cow and chicken. <laughs> anyway, Boom Baboon Arm Summon create a Flame Chomper in hand. That's actually not bad at all. In um, in Jinx Draven, Flame Chompers are pretty decent. Because you want to go wide really fast for mana 4. And this gives you the ability to go wide really fast. It's really good. I think it's pretty It's pretty solid. It's only really good with, uh, with Draven Jinx at the moment. Because you need to have the 3 mana cost card when I'm tossed to give everything plus 1 attack. Without that card, 0-2 Challenger sucks. But... Yeah, Jinx discard, um, definitely solid. This might work with like a Lulu Jinx, maybe. Just having more zero two challengers, maybe that's Lulu Jinx. Yeah, yeah, I could see that being good as well. So, cool card, man, cool card. I'm not an aggro player, so I'm not really getting my my. I'm not getting like a huge serotonin rush, but I think some aggro players are gonna are gonna are gonna like this a lot. Not really much else to say. Pretty solid card for what it does. Not a lot of decks are going to use it per se, but solid card non nonetheless. All right. Glorious Evolution. Epic 10 mana cost card. Replace your cards everywhere with exact copies of themselves. They have one less cost, augment, and are now tech. All right, listen. First of all, the tech part doesn't even matter. The tech card doesn't matter. The, maybe it does, but forget about that. What matters is the minus one cost and the augment and exact copies in everywhere. Yeah, future cards as well, generated cards as well. I gotta be honest. I gotta be honest. This card, no cap up, looks actually somewhat solid in a very slow control meta. Why? Because you will outvalue the hell out of your opponent. But what kind of deck would possibly run this? I think it would have to be something like um, Timelines Ladros with uh, Atrocity. Because all of a sudden, Ladros is cost 8, Atrocity costs 6. The fact that everything costs 1 less, you can pull off some pretty really cool... Um, you can pull off some really cool combos earlier than you should. I don't really think this goes that crazily. I mean, with Victor, sure, but I think you want to play this in a very slow deck. All of a sudden, your Ladros cost 8, he can turn into um, a, what do you call it, a Dreadway for the OTK once again, because it reduces the cost of Ladros by 1. I mean, I think this could fit in a, I don't, I don't think the deck is competitive. I think the meta has to be very slow for it to be competitive. Targon's Peak? Nah. It doesn't do anything to turn you play it. Targon's Peak, the only way it wins is by getting huge tempo shifts, by getting very good cards early. Karma? Karma. Uh, I don't know. I mean, Karma's already very slow. And turn 10, you play this with Karma? Nah, I don't see it. I think that's way too slow. So you can play this on mana 7, generally speaking. You want to play this as early as possible. And you gotta be not dead by doing literally nothing on mana 7. It's very hard to play, but I think in some kinds of really slow metas, th this, is, this is amazing value. This literally pays for itself... After playing seven cards. Now, seven cards is a lot. It's a lot. Sorry, no. No, ten cards. You got to play ten cards for, th for this to... Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. It's bad? Maybe. Maybe it is. I mean, listen. Let's be honest. It's, it's, it's probably a pretty bad card that's never going to see play in any high-tier deck. But I think it's a fun card. Hate on that all you want. I think this card is fun, man. I can see myself having fun with this, for sure. Does every proc augment since... Yeah, it does. It does. Because all cards are... Every card procs its own self. So, if you have a lot of units, like, every unit procs every other unit. It's definitely good with, like, elusives and stuff. Because every elusive, like... You drop an elusive, it's a 1-1. One, one. You drop another elusive, it's a 2-1. Every card you play buffs the elusives as well. It has some meme potential, for sure. Yeah, I agree. 
I mean, if this was a cheap card, it would just break the game. If this was five mana, this would be one of the best cards in the game. I'm telling you, if this was a five mana cost card, this would be one of the best cards in the game, possibly. Just because you could win with Elusive so easily. 10 mana is uh, very expensive. Still, I look forward to trying to build something with this. I think this would be something like a, uh, I don't know. I think timelines for me is where it's at. It looks fun. That's what's most important. It looks like a fun time. I don't think I would play this with Victor. I think Victor is not the win con you're looking for. Should be 8 instead of 10. Maybe, but you have to be careful with these kinds of cards. I'm glad it exists. We can have some fun with this. But it's not going to be competitive, obviously. It just, it just does look fun, though. All right. Shifting Sands. Deal 4 to a unit. Summon 2 Sand Soldiers. That's a bad card, right? I think this is pretty bad. I can't see myself ever playing this. What deck would run this? Listen. At least have it deal 5 damage. If it dealt 5 damage, maybe. But... With 4 damage, it doesn't even kill Azir. It's like, well, you drop Azir down to 1 HP and then what? So I don't know. I, I'm, I'm not feeling it. And it's slow, like... Yeah, if it, if it was dealing 5 damage, maybe. Because Shurima doesn't have enough um, removal. Like, Shurima is low on removal. It's two units. You can't do it to face. If you could do it to face, then that would be a scary card. If this was deal four to anything, that card would be scary because then it would be a decimate with double sand soldier. But it can't go face. It's actually playable at five damage. I agree. At five damage, you can kill certain blockers that are very tough. So yeah, not much to say. I think it's a pretty underwhelming card. Treasure Seeker. When I'm summoned, create a Walking Sands in hand. Guys, what is Walking Sands? A Waking Sands. Oh, Waking. All right, I got a story for this card. You guys ever have one of those moments when you're playing um, aggro? You drop a one drop, you attack. You drop a two drops, you attack. You open attack on turn three. And then all of a sudden, they play a lifesteal unit. And you need to get excited this lifesteal unit. They're going to come back into the game. But you don't know what to discard. Because every one of your cards is good. Well, this card solves your problems, chat. This card creates a card that literally sucks so much that you want to get it out of your hand. You want to throw it away, but it costs too much to throw away. This is the dream, chat. This is the dream. Turn one, you create a card you can discard with, not with, um, get excited. Genius. And you don't even feel bad doing it. You know, usually when you play get excited, you feel really bad. Because you're throwing something away. And you, you, no, this solves every problem you've ever had. Actually, genius card. This does that better. Listen! It costs one more chat. Stop it. <sighs> it's actually... It's better than actually discard outlets because you lose no value. <laughs> Maybe they'll uh, buff Waking Sands to Burst. I doubt it. That would be too strong. 5-2 Burst is way too powerful. I mean, we have, we have the Burst 4 cost make a Mist Wraith. And that's strong in some decks as it is. You can't have burst attackers that do deal 5 damage for so cheap. There's no way that's uh, viable. I mean, it's not a bad card. It's really not that bad. I don't mind it. Last but not least on this one page is the time has come. Summon a Clockling. If you predicted this game, summon 2 instead. Alright, so first of all, chat, stop it. You gotta consider this summon 2 Clocklings almost every time. Because you're playing this in a predict deck. What is that good for? It's literally... Literally only good for open attacking, which I think you don't play this in aggro, and for blockers, for burst blockers. That's about it. It's really inefficient with mana. Eh, I don't know, man. Not a big fan. Not a big fan at all. With karma, even then, like, really? You want to fill your board with two twos as if you didn't have enough space or... I'm not a fan of this card. I don't think it's going to see much play. I could be wrong, but let's go to the next one. All right. More exciting stuff. We will start off with... Okay, listen. I'm going to say something really weird here. I really, really am worried about this card. And you guys might say, what? Grappler, what? Do you know why? Because of the wording. When I count down, summon a random one-cost follower. I'm a little bit worried that that means there will be positive counter manipulation um, or something weird with counter manipulation coming up with Echo. I really don't want Echo to be a countdown champion. 
I don't want echo to work with countdowns. And this wording is unique when I count down. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm afraid that they, they do echo with countdowns or something, dude. When I saw this, that's, that was my first thought. Please don't be the case. Now, I might, I, I might be wrong. Maybe, maybe he's a countdown champion and he's really cool, but it, I'm a little bit worried. I want Echo to be viable in non-landmark decks. I mean, because here's the thing. I think they want to pair Echo with Zillion a lot of the time. Zillion works with landmarks. What if Echo has some kind of weird landmark manipulation where, like, when a landmark counts down, make a copy of the... I don't know, dude, but... Or count up, or I have no idea. But I, I don't want Echo to be a countdown champion, <laughs> if that makes sense. He doesn't fit with landmarks, I'm aware, and I hope he doesn't. I hope he's not a landmark champion. I really do. But it's not unthinkable. I mean, they could literally release Zillion with like three landmark cards in PNZ, and that's it. I know it's Bilgewater, but often they do these things. Like they, they they'll put. I don't know, chat. Overthinking way too much. Yes. Well, keep in mind, I had this thought. I, I literally li listen. Let me explain to you what happened, guys. I was on my bedler, right? Sleeping. And I'm like, I woke up like this. Like, oh, and I'm like, what woke me up? There was a tweet from Legends of Runeterra. I'm like, look at it. And I saw that. So my my half half asleep bed. Um, bed face. That's the first thing I thought of. That was the first image my brain went to. It was this and Echo. So that's where I got the thought from. I wasn't thinking clearly. Maybe, maybe I'm overthinking things, but that's that's what I had when I woke up. That was the first thought I had when I saw this. Anyway. Call me crazy, but the landmark plus the clockling spell makes me think they might add Von Yip support cards. Ooh, that does work with Von Yip. That's a very good point. Clucklings are one drops. That's not that bad with Von Yip, honestly. It's not horrible. And predicting Von Yip is kind of cool because you want to get him on, on curve. I like it. Smart idea. I didn't think about the 5 cost burst card with Von Yip. Summon two four fours on burst is pretty strong. Pretty strong attacking. Von Yip is kind of aggro because you want to you want to buff your 1-1 one, one, um, elusives a lot. So that might be decent. It's not horrible. It's not a, not, not a bad combo. I mean, Reaver's Row, first of all. When I count down summon a random 1 cost follower... Countdown to grant one cost allies plus two plus one and fearsome. I mean, this is literally designed to play with very specific niche decks that are not very good at the moment. I don't think it's that bad. I don't think it's that bad. I'll tell you why. Generally speaking, this uh, in the one one cost follower category where you're playing things like uh, Von Yib Jagged Taskmaster when you're playing Fizz and whatnot. You always open attack because one drops are very, very easily blockable. So you're always open attacking. So let's say mana five, you're going to open attack and then there's no point developing after the open attack usually. You drop this and then you have an even better open attack on seven. Because everything gets buffed, as, uh, including Fizz, which is kind of nice to buff Fizz. Um, Bilgewater doesn't have any buffs except for the, the um, ch -ch -ch TF looking card, right? So... Overall, I don't mind this card. I don't think it's that bad. Giving you two one-drops and fearsome and plus two plus one to everything on your board is pretty spicy. Yeah, pocket aces. It, it, it sucks when you attack on evens. I agree. I mean, then you just play it on mana six, right? You don't play it on five. You don't play it on curve. But the grant is also permanent. It's not a give, right? So even if you get a buff on your non-attacking turn, it's not that big of a deal. It seems like a lot, but you're an aggro deck. And it, it gives a lot of value, right? Five mana for two units and a buff on your entire board is pretty strong. I like it. I like the card. I think I, I'll, I'll experiment with this. I don't think it's going to be a tier one deck, but it looks cool overall. I mean, even if you think about tier one decks, like imagine you randomly put this in TF Fizz. It's a little bit scary. You put this on TF Fizz, right? Sure, it's five mana, but you have so many one drop elusives in that deck. You have... Those, that is scary. Like, that does a really big swing. Plus, it gives you two more units to attack with. And some of the time, there are elusives as well. I, I like the card. I think it's a, 
I don't think it's that bad. I don't think it's that bad. Yeah, only on board, obviously. I never said it was an everywhere effect chat. I just meant it buffs everything as in everything on the board. That's what I meant to say. All right, line them up, boys. Summon a powder keg, create knock him down in hand. I mean, burst powder keg is very cool. Burst powder keg is very... Why is it bad? What? Burst keg is really cool, chat. Listen, you withering whale, your opponent plays the one cause, give everything armor, boom! Line him up! Your withering does too. That's insane. I mean, you don't need to even the knock him down. This is just a fallback. It's really, really decent. It's very good with um when you don't have powder keg on board. Burst keg is spicy. Especially for AoE clears. TF with a lot of things. You want this with fast spells? Exactly. You play the spell, they do something, and then you, you pop this down. Burst keg, the spell gets one extra damage. This has a lot of potential. I like this card. And the fact that it gives you a secondary card is always good. Discard fodder, ways to trigger, uh, what do you call it? Um, plunder, which is really good in this color. This is really good because it also gives you removal for early game stuff if you don't find it. For example, let's say they play a Teemo. Worst case scenario, you can still drop this and kill Teemo on, for three mana. Not ideal, but like overall, this is not bad. Fiora cries when she sees this. <laughs> it's literally three mana kill a Fiora as well. Like anything with two HP dies to this. I like it. I like the card. I think this is a very solid card. We need Elnik meta back. No, this is solid. This is solid. I like this card a lot. And I, I love playing um, Drain Kegs. I've always enjoyed the archetype. I think it's really cool. TF Fizz buff? I don't think it is. I don't think TF Fizz wants to play with Kegs. Keg Control? I think this is more of a control card. It plays with... A like, the main value you get out of this is AoE clears. So things like the Box, Withering Whale, um, etc. Immortal Keg? Nah. Teemo Gangplank? Well, why Teemo, though? It's not bad with Bacon Rain either, sure. I like it. I like the card. All right. Last but not least. Volunteer Elnik. Three mana, three, four. Very solid stats when I'm summoned. Create a random Elnik in the top six cards of your deck. All right, listen. What this mainly depends on is whether this chains with itself or not. Like, will it chain Elniks? I don't think it will. It should. No, not, not chains. I'm, I'm thinking if you drop a troop of Elnix and it goes for the top six cards in your deck, summon each Elnix and shuffle the rest into your deck. If it pulls that, will it pull it? Will it create another one that gets summoned as well or not? Because that would be insane if it did. It would actually be insane if it, it created a random Elnix. I hope not. So, okay, let's see. Let's look at the order. You drop Troop of Elnix. Play. Top six cards in your deck. Summon each Elnix. And shuffle the rest in your deck. It really depends how this mechanic is programmed. Because if, if you play this, automatically, automatically, before anything shuffles, this is going to create another Elnix. Is it really going to shuffle those Elnix away? Or is it just going to play them as well? I, I, I don't know. It needs testing. It could go both ways. Wait, 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 wait. No! They're forcing P and Z. Oh, I thought, I thought this was Freljord. Yikes, dude. They're forcing P and Z Elnix. Oh, man. Oh, man. There, there goes some ideas. Now it has to be P and Z. P and Z is not the only way to Elnix. I mean, it's the only way to meme Elnix. But Elnix used to be playable in every region. I know it has copy effects, but that's a, that's a meme. Copy effects for memes. I don't know, man. I'm not sure. I don't know how to feel. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's, it's a very good stat line. Three mana, three four is very strong, and it does make Elnix better. And if you play this on curve into this, you usually get a lot of value out of this card. So, it might make Elnix playable again. It really might. It might make Troop of Elnix a viable playable card again. I like it. I like it overall. I think it is cool. Um, I think this might see play. I think actually Elnix might be 
not I, I can't say decent, but they might be playable all of a sudden. Listen, we know Yeti's got a big buff. Guys, is it finally time for this card to shine? <laughs> no, not yet. We demand Elnook Yeti deck. But yeah, that's it for all the new cards. Oh, Christmas tree, oh, Christmas tree, how beautiful my...